<laughs> I think we're ready to rock and roll. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. I feel better about myself. Thank you, Shirley. Welcome to the show. We've got an interesting show going on today. we got iGuide in the house, but then we also have, what is it, CCS? No? Yep. Okay, so yep. what's the CCS stand for? Carl's Coconut Stand. <laughs> Margaritas all day. <laughs> it is. Is that what yeah. it is going to be? That's no, no. This is going to be a very interesting technical base. But Rob, you're gonna you're gonna kind of give it to us layman's terms, kind of thing. Like absolutely. I, I want it kind of simple, right? So yep. uh, not for well, yeah, for the listeners and for me mostly, right? Yep. So then I can get it. But I've already seen some of this, and I'm already in awe. Great. Right? So how would you, I guess, first describe I, in one sentence? How do you describe iGuide? Digital property documentation. Okay. All right. That's already complicating things <laughs> yep. for construction work. But <laughs> yep. okay, let me, Rob Johnson's here Yep. from iGuide and you're technically, you're the, what's your title there? Business development director. So okay. find, find new business, find new verticals and put the product in it. Nice. Then to your side, we've got Carl here. Carl, mm -hmm. sorry, how was the last name again? Burnett. 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 There yep. it is. Okay. From CCS, right? Yep. What's your official title? Uh, I'm the owner of CCS Engineering Construction. How long have you guys been around? Uh, two years now. Uh, not new to the industry, but this but business the is new. Company the official years. company is new to the industry. Nice. All right. So welcome. And then we have Patrick here. Yep. The architectural technologist at CCS. So do all the uh, permit drawings for uh, the company. All right. So it's good. Well, well, we'll get into more of you guys on another show because we're, we're planning on doing something like that. But today's show is all going to be about iGuide. And you guys have used iGuide in the last... Uh, we adopted it how long ago? No, it's, it's, it's been six, six months. months. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we, we can't say enough good things and, and how it's changed the way that we do business and and uh, our process. Uh, we're, we're here to support Rob and I guide and, and uh, we're huge advocates for it and uh, for everybody in the industry to have it. Uh, it. Just to settle the playing field, level the playing field and everybody get on the same page. So, Did you have the same thought that I had when I first was made aware of it that why didn't this come sooner and how did we build before this it's yeah. such a leap right <laughs> yeah it's uh it's technology is not easy from uh, my past experience and my my other business before i started ccs uh um, but i would say technology is not easy in construction in it, general it's not easy in general or construction yeah. and uh especially I mean, the industry hasn't changed since 1947. We talked about that a little earlier. And uh, the it's hard to get people to adapt and change and use something and think there may be a different, a better way. It, it's really hard to change people's perspective on that, uh, especially if they're making money. They've grown their businesses. They've been around a while. Uh, it's nice for us because we're new and we're trying to be innovative and trying to be different and change the landscape of the uh, construction industry. And without iGuide, we wouldn't be able to do that. So how did you or how did Rob, how did I guy find them or vice versa? It's interesting how our relationship started where Carl was looking for technology to change his business. So you were actively looking for technology. Yeah, yeah we're actively looking all the time to change our business and we wanted the best solution to help our whole process. And he was looking and, and found our website and engaged with us. And it was a late Friday night that he was trying to transact a deal. <laughs> and I picked up my phone and, and we did do the deal. And he kind of said, I'll do the deal with you right now, but you got to come and bring the system with you and train me on it on Monday. Now, this is a Friday conversation. Yeah, Friday conversation. And <laughs> late we, Friday conversation. Late, late Friday conversation. No late for Carl. But. Yeah. <laughs> it, I, I will say uh, that's exactly how it went. And they did deliver. So that's the other thing that, uh, especially in Canada and iGuide being local, uh, their support and, and Rob's a, <laughs> delivering on my crazy ask. Um, I just knew it was a right fit from, from that point on. But that is how it happened, and they did deliver it to our office. And the, and the reason for that, because we don't do that for everyone, as, as I mentioned earlier or when we were off um, before we went shooting, was we've been in a lot of different verticals. And when we started to go heavily into this construction space, we were looking for people that would adopt change. And when I was speaking with Carl on that late Friday night, it was an immediate trigger of, oh, wow, you're looking to change your workflow, your processes, the way you interact with your clients and your subcontract people, you, the ideal person that would adopt our technology very quickly. So we hopped in our car Monday, delivered the system and did the training the same day because we were in a mode, you know, six, seven months ago, we wanted to learn as much from you and how you were going to go to market yeah. from it 
and, and your enthusiasm and your technical skills with your 20 years of construction experience, we needed to learn that to talk to other contractors because the tech's the tech, it's, it's changed a lot. It continues to change, but how do I position it with you? And how do I position it with GCs and guys swinging hammers that they can relate to the success that Carl's had? So, Carl, I know you got a few grades, right? So you're probably still younger than me. <laughs> and I'm curious because I've always asked these questions about the younger trades that are coming into the business, how they're so ingrained in getting early technology and being a part of that and trying to streamline their businesses. Why is an older guy like you thinking that process too? Uh, well, we're a new business, so I have to think different. Okay. I mean, there's a million construction companies out there, good ones, bad ones. There's handy guy, handy men, you know, two chucks in a truck, I call them, which are good. Um, but... For what we wanted to do, which is design, engineer, and build all in-house and streamline the process, I had no choice but to look around and and do it different than everybody else's. So that's why I'm, I also, I mean, I want to build the future of the construction industry and, and change some things. And as I was mentioning earlier, um, the I just want them to be respected in the, in, in the field they're in as professionals yeah. and the only way to do that is to adopt technology change and do things different than it's been done to now okay so rob i want to get into the nitty-gritty now to just explain to people that are listening and i'm hoping that they're going to watch it as well too because yeah. i think this is more of a, a visual that we got to pay attention because we were fortunate enough for you to scan the studio which we'll show we'll yeah. talk about how that all came about yeah. but i guess let's start at the beginning of eye guide and how it all came the technology what you can share what it, what you're allowed to share what have sure. you right so iGuide's a Canadian company. Uh, the official company name is called Planetar. Our product is called iGuide. Okay. That product has been around for about 13 years. We officially did our 10th anniversary. As we're to, we always say we were in startup, figure out for three years, but we've officially been in business for 10 years. For I'm going to say the first eight of those years, very heavily into real estate, which was allowing people to scan their property, both visually and with LiDAR, to help sell the houses, to help real estate agents differ their product, their the products they were selling, which were houses, uh, to the customers, create a better visual experience. About two, two and a half, three years ago, they, they realized, wow, there are other markets that could really use this stuff. And some of them be, might be insurance, so I can talk a little bit about that, and very heavy, heavy, heavily uh, consumed by architectural clients and then construction clients. Insurance, you're talking restoration? Insurance of? restoration. Okay. So, you know, unfortunately, if something has happened, a tornado goes through, a uh, fire, flood damage, whatever, is be able to document that property for insurance purposes so you can get a claim approved faster, get your money faster. Nobody ever really thinks about this, eh? You no. walk into your dwelling all the time and you don't really think about that. No. So a big change in that industry coming is called pre-loss insurance, which is, wouldn't it be nice to have a scan of my property on file yeah. on a USB key or in the cloud or somewhere that I can use in case something ever happens? Sure. So pre-loss is, is kind of a new evolving market as well, just scanning the property and using the visuals for insurance purposes. But then there's a whole other vertical for us in the insurance space that if, if a storm goes through, to be able to capture the property, file a claim, because you want to reduce fraud and you want to solve two problems in that industry, reduce fraud, get the people with legitimate claims, their money faster to go on with their lives. And that's what by being able to digitize your property can do for you very quickly. I think pretty inexpensively as well. We, we do that now. We do reports for uh, restoration companies as from an engineering standpoint. And we take uh, Patrick would go out in the field and take pictures like yeah. just with your phone or, or physical or, measurements yeah, the, and physical please. measurements. Um, but I guides a little more than that. Yeah, it is, this is perfect, and they should really request one. Every insurance company should request one an eye guide done. It not only gives you the photos, uh, a 360 virtual tour, it also gives you proper dimensions. So when they say we need to replace 1,200 square feet of flooring because there was a flood, yeah. it's 1,200 square feet of flooring. Whereas right now, we just walk in and take a few pictures, and we do our best to figure out, you know, um, what the what the areas are and what's being replaced but this actually gives you all the detailed measurements so from everybody's standpoint it would give uh and when we should start using it for the reports that we do do we haven't as of yet because that's just not the way uh we've been doing it or the industry's done it forever but um but it would give accurate baseline 
for everybody involved to uh, make the process quicker and get get the people back to where they want to go. So it's really been about the last year and a half where we've really we've realized how architectural engineers, BCIN people like Patrick, how much time they were investing going on site. Got to get him on the uh, talking as well. <laughs> um, how much time they were going on site to manually measure things, then go then go draft it, and then go get it approved by an architect, approved by a BCIN person. For your average GC person going into a renovation, that might have been three to five weeks. Like these timelines so, are huge. Patrick, realistically, before I guide and you were doing what you were doing, yeah. what was the time comparison? Oh, it was night and day. Like I would spend hours on, like even if it was just a small residential reno, like I'm in these people's houses for your day a is done. Of, like you're spending the entire. I have to yeah reserve a good chunk of time to be able to go do that stuff, and like it's just awkward in general because people are still living at their house trying to go about their day, and you're kind of like. I got to get over here. I got to get over there. And yeah. rather than bringing the eye guide over, I'm in and out in like 20 minutes, half hour, something like that. Yep. For like a, a decent size space. So wow. yeah, it's it like, I've noticed a big difference with that. I can have a better, um, just communication with the customer at the time. They don't feel like as intrusive, like I don't feel as intrusive to like coming so, into so their So be house honest with me regarding day. Carl, when you were doing the first few ones that you were doing, were yeah. you telling him it was taking about four or five hours, not 20 minutes? No, yeah, that's was, he was gone for weeks. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, like, we, we, it was like, it was down the road and I'm like, Patrick, you've been gone a week. It can only I take so much of him in a day. to streamline everything. Yeah, we would tell customers, could you make a lasagna? Patrick's going to be there for dinner. Um, but CCS has a luxury and it's something that they have to promote that they can go and do these measurements, do the as-built drawings, and then actually do the BCIN component or stamp it mm -hmm. and get go to the construction phase. Yep. A lot of GCs don't have that luxury where they're going having to go to outside resources to make that happen. Yeah, so, so they're compressing their time based on the way they're set up. A lot of other GCs are having to go out outside. And as soon as you go outside, you can't control cost. Of you can't control time. So you, their time going back to the homeowner or going to the city to get drawings done yeah. is not days, weeks. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, like we can we can turn around a permit set of drawings in two weeks it, because we do everything in house. Now the construction wise is it, like we've separated design, engineering, and build. We we would like the opportunity to bid on the jobs that we do drawings and design for, but that particular process that we would use eye guide and we do use it in the construction side, but uh, that we would utilize this technology the most. We're like two weeks, whereas everybody else is months. So get. I know listeners are and viewers are watching, and, and I know we're being in construction. It's always about the no dollar value, right? Yeah. Do we want to share what the cost is? But I know that you mentioned off mic. Yeah. There's other smaller associated costs, but there's an initial cost, right? So, sure. There's an, an, an initial investment with the camera. Of course. So it's our sensor. Um, the sensor has two components to it, a, a camera and LIDAR. You have to take, you have to buy that. That's about three grand Canadian, okay. right? That's a one-time upfront cost. You then go and shoot your jobs, but there's no subscriptions. There's no long-term commitment. There's anything. It's basically pay per use. So if you're only doing six jobs a year, you're paying me six times. What are you paying me for? To give you the 3D environment and give you drawings. Now, the cost of that is going to range from 50 bucks to 500 bucks based on square footage. The scope, yeah. S scope and level of detail. What I mean by that is if you're going through a warehouse, there's not much detail. Just give me the windows and doors. If you're going through a property where you want cubicles, where you want all the bathrooms drawn, where you want all this drawn, and you want all that extra detail, that just comes into... What was the low? What was the high? 50? 50 to 500. Wow. All right. Now, I, I, as, I, as soon as you start getting into 50,000, 100,000 square foot facilities, all these timelines that we mentioned about being a couple of weeks, all of a sudden go into months. But you can get the same drawings back from us in 24, 48 hours. Right? So yeah, if you're doing an average 5,000, 6,000 square foot home, let's just say, yeah. and you want to scan that whole house and you have that. So that's the initial cost of it. Even at the top end at 500 bucks, yep. you already have all the data that you need to start the permit permit process, right? Yep. To, to start drawings for to sure. To start drawings. Know. And then the other the other nice thing is, and there, we're working with a couple of uh, uh, companies they just want the data for now and future. So you will have that data forever. So if you wanted to replace your, if, if right now you're doing a reno in your kitchen and we did an eye guide of your whole house, you keep that, so that, that's yours, you own it. 
and you wanted to renovate your garage or renovate your bar you downstairs, have you have the info. You have all the... So there are companies, and, and we're trying to work with one right now, that wants us to do 390 gyms, like like workout gyms. And they want us to scan every single one, so they just have a database so they can get ready for their renovation plan over the next 10 years. But they Or even budget that, that plan. They can budget that plan, and then they have... And then we can do virtual meetings, and we'll get into all this, I think, after you look at the scan, but... We can have virtual meetings. So if they call us to do a renovation on that that space, we we're all looking at the same baseline data. So it's and they own it forever. There's nothing like I, I hate to say this, but every construction company in Canada should have, should have one of these. Yeah, I, I, I don't want them to. I, I wish it was three million dollars an eye guide after I bought mine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but the reality is. Everybody should have one, and it would only help all of us in the industry because it would give us all a level playing field. So, you know, we, we came into this with a construction focus, but you see how quickly we pivoted into, like, capital planning. That if that owner had that proper, uh, the digital properties of all those gyms, he can calculate his, how much flooring he's going to need, how much paint he's going to need, how much drywall he's going to need, and stage his properties as he wants to, and do all that without ever getting in his car without get, ever leaving the office, without ever having to go back to take additional measurements. All of those time variables add up to a lot. And we know there are a lot of guys in trucks right now going to a job site with a tape measure in their pocket yep. to, to recheck things or yep. to, to get some data back. And the back cool to kids the, have the laser tape measures. Yeah, and, and, yeah, yeah, we got a lot of those. That's what I am. <laughs> but they're, they're pretty cool. And they're going to yeah. shoot with their distro device. They're going to write down a measurement and send that back to the office. Here's the measurement we missed. Yeah. So for large companies, that's not a big deal. You know, your Malul Blamies of the world and all those big type, they have staff big enough that it's not a big hit on their business. Say, send the guy in the truck. He can go just double check some measurements. 90 like percent of our contracting world is five to 25 man companies yep. for them to have to go on back on site to recheck something can be a big hit on time their credibility uh the cost of the building materials everything i'm just thinking streamlining the sub trade yeah the whole sub trade like you start speaking to other trades that are coming on the job site and they're questioning okay so what is the square footage of whatever tile finished material whatever all, all kinds of material drywall everything yep it's already there. That data is already there explaining. And here you go. It's done. Right. It's like we're, we're, we're also trying to work with a developer that owns a bunch of properties just to get him. We're going to scan every single one of his properties and keep his database. And then he's going to just buy what he needs at any given time. Yeah, he knows. So when he goes, we need to upgrade the fire alarm at X, Y, and Z, I go, no problem. I'll open the file for X amount of dollars, which is insignificant for, for like what I would charge. And we can look through the whole place and go, that needs to replace, that needs to replace, that needs to replace, and nobody needs to move. So uh, even developers should have a database of all of, they, they have pictures of every single one of their properties. Yep. Yep. Insurance needs it. They need it for multiple due to reasons, restructuring, reorganizing financially, all of this stuff. But this would give them exacts and a 3D tour of every single property. Have you guys scanned your offices? Your warehouse? Your we, we've scanned our own. Yeah, yeah and our own houses own. Yeah, and all that. Yeah, to, right? we when we were learning, I mean, there's all technology has a learning curve. This one's pretty small, but it does have a learning curve. Um, very, very easy. I mean, anybody can do it. Uh, but we scanned our own houses and our own properties. And yeah, just I, to get it adopted to the tool, right? Yeah. But but I then, interrupted you, Rob. So I, I knew you were going to give us the history then, of no, it. No, no, no. But then like what you just said, once you've scanned it, you just put that USB stick away and that's your pre-loss insurance. Yeah. Right there. And you haven't done anything. You haven't paid anymore. It's boom. You have a digital copy of your property. How many trades, how many businesses are like, oh, my truck got stolen or I got broken into my warehouse, my supply, my whatever, my, my unit. And then you have no data. You have nothing at all. Or, or you have pictures, but they're six months old. Mm, right. Exactly. So, you know, what I, what I was going to say was um, we have uh, along the lines of trades people and sub trades, because you brought up a great point about sub trades. Um, we have a condo manager in Kitchener that we've scanned their whole condo facility. It's only about 16 floors, maybe about 80 units. But they said, we scanned their lobby while all the ceiling tile was down. And uh, we scanned it, have a digital copy, put it back up, and then they started to get leaks, right? Interesting, they go, who do you get to fix it? So we, there are a lot of businesses out there of, of Bid Me and Homestars and all them yep. that, that people go to to find a contractor. Or do you have a friend? Or we had this guy fix it before. 
what this condo manager has now done is says, I have a digital copy of what's up there and what needs to be fixed. I'm going to send that out to 20 guys and see who wants to bid on it. The guys don't have to leave their truck. They don't have to come on site. And he went from 20 contractors to five to two in 24 hours. And the two that he wanted to bid on the project said, we're still going to come on site. We want to take our own to measurements verify, just to, to verify yeah. and get the scope. But he went from 20 to two in about 24 hours. But and they're coming on site discovering the information that was sent to me yeah, is, is accurate. Is, is accurate. And so now I'm just confirming this. Yeah. So next time there's another tendering going on, yeah. they trust this person. That's right. So there are, there are companies like BidMe that are now asking for that data up front because we can send it out to 20 contractors all at once and decide if they want to bid on it or not. Imagine how many lasagnas he yeah he can, don't like don't send it out to twenty contractors <laughs> whoever's listening <laughs> yeah don't try, don't send the twenty subs but I, I want to get back on track so that was the history and that's how it is yeah. and you guys are always is it improving is it changing is it evolving like oh sure so we're the camera that we have with us today the camera that Carl has is called our IMS six it just means sixth iteration of our product okay we've already got drawings and engineering going on for it's your seven. camera it's our camera your lens and I was asking off camera yeah. that you got like a six mil lens on there right yep so we it's a Canadian comp we're a Canadian company it's designed all the IP is here it's assembled and manufactured in Waterloo Ontario our software development teams in Waterloo. And um, yeah, I've been around for about 13 years doing all of this. And now it's making a mark in the construction. And, and now, so we've, we've already made a huge mark in the United States and Canada in real estate and insurance. And we're now finding the comfort zone of, of people like Carl using it in construction. I know, but I want to go back to the small, what'd you call them? Chuck and truck? Two chucks in a truck, which I'm not knocking. I'm just saying. No, you should patent that. That's a good one. There, Copyright. There's, yeah, and there's some very good ones, like yeah. the handyman, like that the uh, small, the carpenter, small companies. the small guy. But you're doing a bathroom rental. You're doing a kitchen rental. Yeah. Scan that. Yeah, we're, we're, we would scan it for them. We don't do that. But that's, I'm just saying we're just in a different mode than, than they are, but yeah. there are some good ones. And, and yes, I mean, they could scan that. But and, I, I see these small business like laying out 100 batteries on the table. They're spending money on tools, and I'm just th- like I'm listening to you guys, and I'm going, "This is a valuable tool yeah. in well, our toolbox. Like it's totally a, a valuable tool." I, I yeah. said it before, and I'll say it again. Like every company should have one. Every, like, it, it doesn't it's, matter if you're small or big. It yeah. doesn't matter. You, it you, makes sense that the big one would just get it because they got so many jobs on on the go and things like that. But I'm thinking that one bathroom, that one kitchen, so, so and then and, so the bigs and then are getting it for a different reason. That they're getting it for what we call midway construction. So the bigs are getting documentation. Into documentation of yeah. hey, can you just show me the progress of that property from week one yes. to week two to week three, week four, where the project managers aren't having to go on site and taking five hundred pictures themselves. So they're the big, medium to big size guys are using it more for pro, for construction monitoring, construction progress. The little guys are doing it for the full gamut, right? Of pre construction drawings for going to um, getting your permits. And then using it maybe a little bit for midway and then final. The great thing about final is you've got a before and an after that you can advertise your work to your, to your other clients with. Are you guys doing that? Are you guys seeing that documentation is actually becoming a process of this as well? Like anything, implement, uh, implementation's hard and that, that's on our end. Um, but yeah, we're, we're, we're using it and we're noticing, uh, obviously it, it would help and, and uh, it, it makes a huge impact um so yeah we are doing that and we're we're, it helps with every stage of our process like there's not one stage of our process that this doesn't help with or this baseline doesn't assist us with including when we go to construction um we go back to it again and meet as a team and meet with whoever we need to the homeowner or, or the business that we're doing work for and we go through it room by room on a virtual tour we could tell you where the light switch is and where it needs to go. We could do, tell. Do you guys still kick yourself that, like, this is how it is now today? Yeah. And what's it going to be like five years from now? Is it just going to get better? But what it was like five years ago? Yeah. Just going through the process too, how we typically are used to going about like that full scope of work, uh, compared to having used the eye guide. Now it's just like the wasted time. Just like the applications are endless for it. Like you just the going from one process of doing a full permit set with manual uh, dimensions pictures that we have to go back to site and redo stuff versus having everything in front of us. We can overlay plans. Like we don't even have to necessarily go for like the absolute detailed drawings. We can overlay a basic uh, DXF Hmm. file that's automatically provided 
And that gives us enough baseline information that we don't have to go redo anything. And it just, the, the amount of time spent before was, yeah. There I say you guys can just focus on making money. But ultimately, that's the goal. But, uh, you know, uh, we do focus on the experience and, and uh, our, making our customers happy and uh, also making our culture and our staff happy, which stuff like this does. So um, we have to make money in order to keep the lights on and the wheels going. So that's a necessary it's a big wheel. When I say make money, yeah. make the clients happy, yeah. deliver the yeah. product. Yeah. Like it, we're, everything you sold. we're excited to talk about this and we're excited to to get people into our process. Like we won't start a job unless we start with one of these. Yeah. So it, you asked about the future and what's to come. I'm super pumped. Like we're going to be ahead of everybody else as new technology comes out. That's my goal in every aspect. We buy every tool for our guys that is the best of the best. Like my goal is to get so far ahead and adopt all of these things and, and using iGuide. And I, I mean, I've tried to, you know, you know, join iGuide and get them to adopt me as a child and, <laughs> and so on. But, uh, but I, we're super excited as a company and my, my whole staff is, is excited because we are adopting these things and it is making the process better. Like there's a better way in every and, facet yeah, yeah, in every facet of what we're doing. So well, it really this, helps with, with employee engagement, doesn't it? I, I feel we have the best staff going and the best culture going. Um, I mean, I, you know, I, maybe they're lying to me, but uh, <laughs> I, I I tell them how great it is and and that they like it. So so uh, it's interesting. I guy comes in first and leaves last. Technically it, speaking, technically yeah. speaking, yeah. Because you're photographing before the project started, yeah. and then you're documenting throughout. Yep. And then you're photographing the end result, which is what you guys have delivered. So even if the client doesn't want that, so so the client could use it for um, the client could use it for their own marketing or their own doc. Hey, before and after where a contractor could use it like Carl is selling that next job. Hey, here's what the project looked yeah. like before. Here's what it, here's what it was after rather than just having a before and after on your website, you have an immersive experience of here's what, here's a walkthrough of that before and after. Right. And for not a lot of money, right? No, it's not. I'm just like compared to what the cost of a brand new smartphone is these days. Yeah. You're not that far off, right? And I know that a lot of people are just using their smartphones going on a job site and documenting that. But then they got to scroll through millions of photographs yeah. to try to compile everything and put it all together when you guys are already doing that. We're doing all, all of that already. So we're taking thousands of pictures that they would take normally yeah. in a fifth of the time, a tenth of the time, in, 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 in one location. Not sorting by job, you're in one location. Yes, yeah, so I, I would one venture file. to guess it's quicker than a tenth of the time. Yeah. Like if we had to take 500 photos with an iPhone, one after the other, we would scan this whole building by the time I'd be done. And, and that's <laughs> that's not even the worst aspect. The other aspect is sorting the pictures after. Oh, yeah. That if you ever have to go through and say, where is that light yeah. socket? It's yeah. finding f just the time involved in finding yeah. that oh, yeah, it's, is, is the, the 10 times factor, right? It yeah. feels archaic going back to that way. It really does. The, yeah, it does. We yeah. had to do it the other day. We were... I, didn't have the eye guide with yeah, it'd be like you, yeah, yeah, yeah. it'd be like you walking into yeah, a drafting company and the guy you know pulls down his drafting yeah table. it's t square and, and yeah. t square <laughs> yeah. right that's, that's what it feels like going back to like just fingertips are covered ago. in blue yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, like, he's like he's got the overlay paper where's the, the delorean the where, yeah. where, when did i land here like yeah. what's going yeah. on um oh, so rob do you have stuff to show us on regarding uh i guess the company because we want to share more information about planetar and eye guide right show the camera now okay we could go through what it looks like to scan uh, scan the room we're going to be in it but we did prior to coming on air show scan the room without anybody in it so we can kind of do a before and after just like what you just said we sure. kind of are the first ones in and then the last yeah, ones exactly, out right? we can show a before of what it's like to scan a, okay so do you want to pull up the camera uh, yeah. the, the footage that you scanned before we actually started recording all right so now you're just scanning it rob so this is the this is the output at the end so we're, well, I can talk quickly about the scanning and the scanning process, okay. but this is... No, no, you, t you drive. Don't okay. Worry, I'm, I'm just passenger. So again, there's, there's two components to this, where you take the job, the, the camera onto your job site, you go into the room, you go into the property, you set it up, it just is on a basic tripod, and you basically press a button on your phone to say, I want to measure, I want to measure, and I want to measure. So this is a great example of what we call a virtual environment, where you know we, we shot the studio before anybody was in here, 
And there, if I would have known this, I would have cleaned up a tiny bit. <laughs> <laughs> like the amount of detail that I'm seeing, like everybody who's watched the show has just seen from the tabletop up. And this is what it is. This is how we set it up. But now you're showing, you're behind the curtain wizard. Like yes. that's what you're showing here. And you're literally seeing everything. Yes. So this is wow. where, again, we can measure in this space. We can document this space. We can tag assets in this space. So this goes back to, again, never having to go back on site. We, we shoot it once. We create a digital How long did that take for you to shoot? Uh, under, under a minute and a half, two minutes. <sighs> wow. Okay. And, and this is all shareable content. So even if you know, you're in your downtown Toronto office and I'm in Kitchener, we would be looking at this together. I can share this with you. I can share this with Carl or the contractor, whatever. We can all be in a team. Anybody on the project. Anybody on the project can be looking at this and going, hey, what I, are we going to do on this wall? I, I will touch on that. You can also make it private. So this, if you're the contractor or you're uh, you know, working on this job, you can select who you want to share it to, which is what we do. Um, there is a way to make it open URL, like anybody can view it, but there are ways to keep it contained, to keep it contained. Yeah, yeah totally. And the reason we had to put those controls in because of the different industries we're in. When you're in the real estate world, you want everyone in the world to see it because you hope it opens up your marketplace and you have more buyers. When you are scanning someone's home, it's often not, or when a construction contractor is in someone's home, it's not usually in a condition of you know, preparing the house, staging the house to sell it. Mm -hmm. So we want to just control, hey, I'm going to just share this with these three people for 24 hours. And then it locks itself out. So you can share the content in a variety of different ways, controlled or wide open. So pixel rate wise, I, I, you don't know what the... I don't no, remember okay. what, I'm no. just curious. Okay, so, but I mean, it's pretty... I mean, that's, I don't know if that... No, that's not a 4K TV. I think that's actually a 1080 uh, PTV. And it's yeah, it looks like we need crystal. a reno in here, Rob. If I can get the uh, <laughs> eye guy to that, that'd be great. <laughs> so the, this, the, the, one of the main pieces, again, for capital planning is looking at the visuals. Yes. Right? That took me two minutes. I uploaded it to our cloud, and that was available in about two minutes. So even if you're on the job site, you want to scan, you want to send it to your boss 100 miles away, you're wait, maybe five minutes. How large time. is the file? Uh, it was about 40, 40 megs. Okay, that's not crazy. So we have, we have an app that you can actually just sh upload it straight from your phone to the pro let it assemble the property, share the link with it under five minutes. Let me ask you, lighting wise, different times of day, mother nature, weather, all that yep. stuff, like can you adjust afterwards or can it be adjust on the day while you're doing the scan? Great question, two answers. So while you're scanning, so the LIDAR component, the laser level component doesn't, doesn't care about lighting. Right. The visuals obviously do. You can adjust them in post. You can adjust them as you need to for Plenty that. Plenty of latitude on Plenty, that? Yeah, lot okay. of, lots of latitude on okay. that. Um, a lot of real estate people actually will then take the images into like Photoshop or something yep. and super, yep. super enhance them. Right. For our, our, the insurance and the AEC spaces, we don't do that. It's the visuals. Yeah, we, Good enough. We've shot like a more early morning. We've shot in the later that afternoon. Beautiful. And during, Kick up a little sawdust and you yeah. get a little backlit <laughs> yeah, there. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's yeah, that's it. Patrick throws the sawdust <laughs> yeah. in, in every <laughs> shot. But, um, but we've never, like for what we're using the information for and what we would walk through with a customer or trades or our own team, um, it's never been an issue like for what we're like maybe for real estate if they're selling a house and they want it to appear a certain way but whether it was 5 30 a.m i shot one in you know in strathroy uh, and at night we shot one or in a building we shot one in uh, downtown uh, windsor there um, and it was a little darker for what we're using it for the lighting's never been an issue and we've never adjusted it so is all for the technology in the camera that's a making a balance of the lighting yes okay that's what i figured and then if we didn't have power, let's just say you're going into a building without power, there is a, a separate accessory you can buy of light underneath the camera. So you can illuminate the scene if you want to, wow. if you need to. So that just helps with the visuals, right? That if you're going through a property without power, especially in insurance re reasons, fire has gone through, you don't have power in the building or whatever, you can have an, ex an additional accessory light that illuminates the scene as you go through it. So I'm watching you just navigate through what you've already documented and... You're going pretty extreme on 
the, the vertical and horizontal Did as well. Did I just like, hear Rob sending us a light to try? <laughs> just, is that what I just heard? I think I heard that. I'm sorry. There's a separate show yeah, happening yeah, over yeah, there. Yeah. But uh, you, I see that you got a lot of freedom. Like you, you photograph quite a bit on the ceiling, quite a bit on the floor. Because it's a like, full holy three. Holy cow! It's a full 360. Wow. So if you think about another industry or another vertical for this is like fire safety planning. And you want to document where all your sprinklers are, where all your water inlets are coming in. You can go through the property and then create a draft. Um, or you're an HVAC guy, there's your sprinkler there. So you get a full, it's not a full 360, because if I look straight down, I do get. Yeah, there's a pause. Where, there's, yeah. A, there's the pause where the, the stand is. But for looking straight up above you at every panel, like if I go into the back into the corner shot where I was, Again, this is great for capital planning purposes. I can look straight above and have a better detailed view of what, that, you know, that duct tape on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> That's not holding the cable anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, you're seeing everything. You're seeing behind the curtain. Most. Literally behind the curtains. How far, can you zoom in? Like, yeah, so you have... You, you have what? Yeah. 3,500. So th Plus... CCS tax. And, there, and, there's, <laughs> and there's two there's two other variables. So you do get, you know, as you get into larger properties, you can see this navigation map on the left. Okay. This is just the back of the room. You can kind of see the TV here. Yep. But you can see kind of the order. So you, if you're going through a drafted property, you can either click in the scene or click on the map there. And it's just, we haven't drafted this property. It's just the scan data as it is. But, but this data you can already take yeah. and start yeah. working on That's right. the drawing portion of this. So you can do that, or you can have us draft the property for you, right? This is just straight as is. Right? So I'll be able to get whatever the dimension is from that TV off that no, wall. Not not off that particular no, but scan another, right now. Okay. Well, which one? You technically, I mean, there's a measuring tool there. But once they draft the property, which means give a 2D Got it. Uh, a file, then we would have all the exact measurements. So I think there's a... There's a measuring tool there that you could get pretty close right in metric and imperial yes both yeah. both yeah. wow and rob you can correct me if i'm wrong but based on like the number of scans right we need two to like measure a vertical height like if you wanted to get the ceiling height that's correct here, based on that you just needed two separate scans to be able to to do it accurately yeah that's correct and yep. basically the more scans the better so after he's done something like this uh if i have a sufficient number of scans i don't need any more than that to start permit joints i don't so rob i'm new guy brand new toy i'm reading the instructions yep i throw the instructions away because i'm in construction because we all do because we all do <laughs> <laughs> how long is it going to take me to adopt this realistically an hour no way yeah how long did it take you carl uh it's it's 59 yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I watch uh, 60 minutes and 90 minutes. So, <laughs> so the hardest thing we have to train um, you on the, is what, what, what Patrick said, which was how many, how many yeah, shots do so, I need? How many uh, shots do I need to measure that So you're that asking two different things. Okay. Uh, how long did it take us to actually scan? I think about three minutes in our office. Uh, you know, we, we had to hook up the Wi-Fi to the camera on, on a phone. Yeah. So uh, that to, to start scanning with the camera is literally minutes um but to adopt the technology and use it properly and learn all the nuances of what you need to do to get the information you want i would say five scans yeah maybe even less maybe kind of even thing. less let's, let's call time. it five scans for for you know just using a it, it's it's not a lot i'll put it that way it could have been after the first one that we got it but that's taking not everybody's as off. smart as my team and as smart as patrick so it might take five but, but that also depends the, the, the reason that's such a big variable is because there's so many different industries as we said yeah the way it, with the way a real estate person would shoot a property versus a construction guy looking at the property to redo a basement yep. it's a different set of lenses so the tech doesn't change, but your deployment of it does. Yeah. Whether you take one shot in a room or five shots in a room. So that that's a little bit of the learning curve, but it's not a lot. Like it, they it, said. It's not a lot of time, I'll put it that like it's just not. It's not a lot of time. That that is insignificant in the whole picture of even adopting this technology. That is very insignificant. Yeah. Very user friendly. Okay, so Rob, what else do you want to show us here on because I want to get to, I guess, the different stages of how you take it to the other yeah. steps. And I guess at a, at a real quick level, I'll just show one um, additional thing I'm going to get out of. Uh, we're not connected live anymore, so I'll just do this a, a little bit of a different way. Sure. One of the big things that I don't think Carl's group has gotten into yet is something called tagging, which is 
if you're a facility manager or condo manager or a construction guy going through and, and, and you, you know when something is important, you know, hey, that's the boiler there. I better remember where it is or that's a compressor. That's where the humidifier is. Whatever, that, whatever asset is in that building, you want to tag it. So you want to be able to put it in there so I can remember or share where that is with somebody else. So if I'm sending a guy on site to go fix it, I can say, you're going to be going to this floor, this room, and here's what's all around that equipment. So if you're going to need to pull something else out, you can prepare your maintenance plan before you ever go in. Is yeah, it we, possible to tag and we, implement the actual products? So, yes. so we have not, yes. uh, wow. yeah, we have not uh, uh, adopted. I mean, there's, there's, you know, you have to adopt each step of the process. No, it's a process of, to get it. But done. Yeah. we would like to get into that and the tagging, especially for our mechanical and electrical That's guys. That's exactly where I was Because I going. could tag it and tell them exactly which panels I there. know what kind of panel, what, you got boiler, yeah. breakers. I know all this information yeah. from this scan. And so when there's a service issue or something in the future needs to be done, yeah. you already have this data and you already explained to the client, yep. okay, we'll order a new one. Here's the specs on it. So where um, a contractor in Kitchener is using this, they're on a new build, but they're building 20 new at a time. They're tagging the first property of where to go buy things at Home Depot if they run short. So the guys on site can go, oh, I need this plumbing valve. Walk I need right this in and, and that. And go, and go, oh, there's, I'm in the bathroom. This is the plumbing joint that we need it all. I don't have to go back to head office to pull from inventory. There's a Home Depot two minutes away. I know exactly what I'm buying because it goes in, the, it was tagged in the other buildings. <laughs> And that's done at the, the once that done. So you can do it at the initial scanning phase. We, okay. we call that real time real time tagging. So as you're going through the property the first time, I could have scanned the t I could have tagged the TV when I was scanning, or I do it all in post. So it's either again beginning or the end. <laughs> yeah. Right. But as soon as it's done once, it's now done. now I can share those tags with anybody and say this is the TV that's in that room. So think about that from a, 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 man, a property management point of view is how many TVs do you have in the building? Which ones are they? Where are they located? What, what device is connected to them? So you can tag all that information from a capital planning point of view. That's very clever. Right? Wow. So, I mean, we, have, we can show you some other demo properties, but that's not the point. The point was how, how do we use and consume this information, right? Is just tagging things for the aspect of sharing that information and making it a more... Um, more interactive document. So support wise, yep. someone gets this is like, I know Carl would just probably call you guys just to shoot, you know what I mean? Just talk stuff or yep. whatever, but you know, oh, by the way, I got a question kind of thing. So what's the support uh, that we can get from you guys on this? So we have a direct onboarding team. So one person full-time dedicated to starting up with new, new clients. So if, whether they're scanning or learning the, or want to know more options on the back end. Uh, we have a dedicated full-time person, one full-time person that just does the initial training and onboarding because that's the most critical step, right? Uh -huh. So, it's, hey, I want to get going. I got to get scanning it. I got to get my money back on this, right? But then we have a technical support team of eight people that if you're ever having a problem or you don't understand how to do something that's a little bit beyond the basics that we have full-time people in Waterloo to I, look after that. I think Patrick could probably comment on that. I think you guys have used the technical yep. support. Yeah, we've well, in the initial stages, we definitely uh, had some things that didn't sink in quite as well as we'd liked. And yeah, we, we set up a meeting with the three of us in the office and... Yeah, we took like an hour, asked whatever questions and sorted out a number of different things, to be honest. Yeah. So I go back to just to kind of bring this up because you're a contractor that if I were to share this link with you before you'd ever gone on site and allowed you to spend two minutes, does that benefit you going before? 100%. Right. But the amount of information that I would see just by taking a look at that without physically being there. Yeah. I feel as if I was there and I've actually documented everything there, but I didn't do it. Right. Someone else has done it for me. Yeah. So now I'm just doing my homework now and assessing things to figure out the next stage. So we like to say, you know, if, if you were going to send that to your contractor, he can come in with 20 better <coughs> questions rather than the initial assessment yeah. of what's your timeline, Mr. Customer? What were you thinking of doing over here? What, you know, you're just moving the conversation so much forward, so much earlier and managing expectations around it. What's the durability like? Of the camera? Yeah. Well, um, so you have to be respectful. You have to be respectful of it. It's, okay. a, it's a measuring device. It's, it's a digital measuring device. You're not going to have it fall off a ladder from the sixth floor. 
You're not going to do stuff like that. Of course. Right? Um, be respectful of it. Um, the only, it's not IP64. Don't, don't let it get rained on. But other than that, it's very robust. Right? Yeah, but it, treat it like it's your phone. Yeah. Is it sealed? Yeah. So yeah. We, even if there is some... Well, it's got lenses on it, right? Yeah, it's so still, it's, you still it have a blower or something yeah, like that. And yeah. I, I'm thinking about more if it's sealed regarding just airborne dust or what have oh, yeah. you at yeah. different stages of the job yeah. and just be aware of it and just blow it off, blow it off. the unit right. and that's it, right? Yeah. But yeah, you're right. Like don't let Mother Nature yeah. kind of be all over it. I mean, it, right? it comes in a nice trial case. You're not going to throw it in your toolbox, but you're going to take it with you and you're going to respect it and, it and it'll do its work for you. So Carl, where do you see you taking your business with this now? Have you already started to think process coming into the future going this is the capabilities i'm thinking about this is what i want to yeah do we're 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 uh we're working on taking this information and turn uh, uh, and we're currently um working on getting it into virtual reality and having all our customers have virtual reality goggles and and send it to their house so they can virtually walk through these tours and have selections from our design department within that tour that's already happening it's already enabled today. It's it's available. So, uh, as an early as a as a somebody that's interested in this and trying to adopt technology, uh, the transition it's available right now. But to to how that works and and is plugged into the process and the system is not easy. So to go from you know this this. Uh, information to virtual reality on another company's goggles to sending it to a customer for them to be able to walk through and select our designer selections for that wall and physically put them in and then give it to their husband and walk through and you could you could virtually walk through your office a thousand times uh, we we specialize in dental medical optometry vet is kind of where our market is and instead of going to those, you can walk the space. They can walk the space, literally, wow. and then they can select different colors. But that whole process from here to getting to there is going to take us months or. But it's a, year. a possibility without yeah. it, you. They have it. the information. Our plate platform supports. Yes, that. I might taking crazy pills if I start talking about how could you train work with people if you're not there physically as a gc or as a site super and you can walk someone through a job site and explain where things need to be specifically and they can see sure we do that now wow with this without the virtual reality goggles we walk through and go that's where that piece of equipment and they're seeing the information what on their phone or on a laptop either 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 yeah yeah like our our project manager will walk through with us and we'll go hey no more taking a picture and just getting your marker and putting us Arrow it, X marks the spot. Whatever. That still happens. That still yeah, happens. Yeah, and we like that. Like some guys don't want to give up a magic marker, which is great. But but this is a lot better. But we could we virtually walk through and go yes, like that plug. I need supply lines it, here. I yes. need receptacles Correct. here. I need a switch here. Correct. We do that now. We don't. We just don't do it with virtual reality goggles and in people's house. Like, but that's the, whole, that's the next stage. That's 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 inevitable. Stage. It's going to happen. Information, put it in virtual reality, and people walk through and go. I can build. I, they can walk through their whole house or commercial space before it's ever built virtually and select items. Select those doors. Select that wall. Put a TV there. That's eighty-five inch, hundred five inch, three hundred five. Oh, you inch. just open up the door like suppliers. What's that? Yeah. Like walking through supplier showrooms you don't have to deal with scheduling waiting getting clients there. Oh, yeah. demo demo virtual demo, demo showrooms yeah. <clears throat> virtual. Are, are key our clients currently don't go to showrooms we bring them all in house because we have the start of this process all in house we don't send anybody out of but our in the office. event if you've got a client that's not in travel distance to you yeah but they're building and they may be whatever for canada winter they're vacation in Rio or something like that, right? Yep. But they want the process to continue. Yeah. But they don't want to do it over a phone or over a Zoom call. They want to be there without being there. This has the capability to contribute yes, to that. Yes, that's the Absolutely. goal. Absolutely. The goal is to send them anyway. That's the next step. Can't tell everybody everything. No, no, of course <laughs> not. But you can see the wheel spinning. But here. no, they, they, this is where it's going. Like it, it, they have the technology and the capability to, or the information. They, they've, they have the information. It's getting it to there. That is the steps that we hope I guide partners so we, with CCS. You know, that, that really <laughs> just falls back into that midway construction type conversation where you're scanning it, you're creating this visual environment, you're sharing that at any stage you want, right? So we had a customer in North Bay that was 
had a had a security camera on a new build property, new build commercial property. And the external kind of security camera view worked great until the forms went up and the bricks went up and Lock. the drywall. And now you can't see anything. So now they've transitioned to say, we'll, we'll do the security cameras at that point. And now we'll just start going through the property every Friday. And the project managers who aren't even in Canada are doing their timelines, their material orders, their building stuff remotely and never and, and never going on site. That's amazing. Yeah. Because as soon as the wall goes up, they couldn't see it, right? So now they're just going through digitizing. They've got one guy going through the property every Friday at five o'clock, takes them about 40 minutes, uploads, and within five minutes, they have a complete walkthrough and to share with the whole project management team. So I know that you talked about when we were seeing the studio here that you could also present options of different kinds of material. Like we, when you get the data and you have it in post, yep. you can already start to manipulate it that way where you can treat it as if I want to see what this wall is going to look like this way. If I want to. Yeah. That's, it. that's kind of like, ver then you transition into virtual staging. You're yeah. transitioning into that interior design component. Yes. Right. So that's where but that's here too. That's, yeah. that's still a, a component of the eye guide, right? Yeah. You're getting designers. We're, on we're just feeding the data up for yeah. them to be manipulated. Yes. So you're seeing that with your clients, Carl, as well, that you're giving them almost unlimited options of what they can. Let me see what that wall is going to look like this way or that way. Yeah, we have, we, that's what we do. And that's what the capability we have. That's why custom 3d modeling kind of thing we based do, off of this. Correct. We don't do any projects without doing that stage first. Like we're, we're just, we're trying to be, like I said, different than every other construction company out there. Um, and we have the process, but yes, that's what we do. We, we design, we engineer and we build all with, this uh, information as our data, as our baseline. And everybody has the same baseline, but we do it all in house. Uh, other companies might send those files out, and, uh, which is all good, but we're all working from the same baseline. So what's the reaction? I want to get it from you guys as a, as a contractor, the initial reaction of this tool, and then also what's the reaction coming from the clients when they first experienced this? Yeah, no, it definitely, like, you can see the difference between, like, it almost brings an extra level of professionalism, I feel like, that they, they see from us, and they kind of, um, I don't know, the precision it provides, and just, again, through being able to pick out material, because a lot of, um, a lot of the clients we deal with, they have, a, like, trouble visualizing the space, and so. I haven't met a client yet who does. Yeah, so, <laughs> <laughs> so it just, it streamlines everything, and they're they're able to jump into making material selections and things of that nature very quickly, whereas we would have to go through multiple stages before we could even start talking about what. Like, it's really simple to understand, to have a conversation with a client where you already have all the measurements in there, everything's already been inputted, well, yeah. and, and you, okay, we want a 36-inch vanity, yeah, but we've got a 32-inch space, so I'm trying to explain to you how this is not going to yeah. work, but yeah. this is what a 30 is going to look like. Yeah, or or they want to put a swimming pool on a balcony, you know, like, just, just silly stuff, but at least you have... A base, like I said, a, a true baseline of what you're working with. The other thing is, uh, and Patrick didn't touch on, but it's exciting for them. Like people just love seeing their project of their house in 3D virtual. Like it's just they're just excited. Like the the whole process and and mindset and and their I guess uh, um, attitudes about the whole project change because they, they they're engaged in this process and they can see it when when we say hey we're working on drawings we're working on drawings we're working on drawings they think we're lying to them that we're not working on the drawings because they take longer than everybody like they they don't feel comfortable but once we get them in and we sit with them and we go through st this initial stage and then we explain our process from design build and right through construction they they're excited about it now so it, it's changed our whole uh, I guess, uh, uh, for lack of better words, Your experience. Pitch, it's right? changed our whole experience. Yeah. Do you feel that as if the clients feel more engaged into the project, that they're part of it, it sooner? 100%. And then all of a sudden, they're more um, receptive to actually upselling they themselves. Uh, they, they are, uh, I don't know about upselling, um, but they are... Like, I'm thinking the possibilities. They go, well, you've got all this data here, yeah, and we're noticing there's a dead spot here on a corner or something. We could build something here. Yeah, they're more... They're more. Uh, 
clear on on their vision scope. and and then their scope yeah. they're more clear on what that means uh, a lot of people would say hey i'd like to do a wood wall like this and you say well that's going to be x amount of dollars uh to do something like that they don't understand the scale of it until they see it in in real life form for lack of better words like it everybody's like oh i'll just put a bar in my basement and you're like well the wall you want the bar is 42 feet like what do you mean you're just going to put a bar over there but once you get in the process and and have all the information and like I, I keep saying baseline data because that's what it is like every doctor works off baseline data they have somewhere to start we have the 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 model to start from and we're all working on a level playing field so they're excited because they understand now I want to. I wanted to actually talk about takeoffs, right? But I know Carl, you were mentioning off mic that this already start. I keep going back to that. This already starts everything, and it gets you to the point where you can yeah. include everything. Yeah, the, the including only thing, takeoffs. The only thing with takeoffs, and what I wanted to mention and thought about is, you just like you don't want to tell people that it will do all that for you. It doesn't do all that for you. It has the information for you to be able to do, to do all that. of that. Yeah. But if they think they're going to take an eye guide of a reno space and it's going to provide them a takeoff. No, that's not what I'm talking okay. about. Okay, yeah. so just, just so you know, like there's, uh, there's... The information is starting there. <coughs> like, let's go over the house, right? It's eye guides the foundation. That's and right. you guys are attaching everything and Correct. it has the capability to get to the takeoff. It has the information within their files and within their process eye guides process to assist you to do a full takeoff on a project no problem so i want to ask patrick and, and carl you guys um when you guys started your business two years ago but you've been in construction beforehand right yeah when you guys discovered this and started working with this did it allow you to realize that you can grow a lot bigger because you can take on more challenges is that basically what happened it yep. was like the missing piece, you know yeah. what I mean? The link. I, I think every construction company uh, and design build and construction company struggles with growth because it's it's typically and, and has in the past all been all based, like it's it's not technology based, it's, it's personnel based. So you just said we get more drawings, we hire more people to do more drawings. That's the general That's formula. the general. Yeah. This has allowed us to grow and very quickly and uh, allowed us to be in different spots it, like uh, geographically without actually being there so we do a lot of of zoom and demo calls uh, at, or uh, walkthroughs from our office with our team that's already there across ontario because we're all dealing with the same data so we we can only, we only have to go to a job site once. I went recently to a municipality, the Peel region, for a, a bunch of jobs they had. I was the only contractor walking around with an eye guide. I talked to nobody. I didn't bring anybody. I didn't. And they kept they started asking me questions like, "What's going on?" I'm like, "Nothing." They're like, well, they're <laughs> like "Nothing to see." They're like, what, what, what to see. Yeah, they're like, "What? What is that?" And I'm like, I, "This gathers every piece of information I need." You walk around with four people and a team and a tape measure and this yeah, and that. Yeah. And I said, "I will do this in five minutes." And then I went and had a coffee and I went to the next site. We did three sites in one day. I said about five words and I had every piece of information. And within two weeks, we had drawings, we had concept drawings, we had everything prepared for this municipality. And they told me nobody was even close to having that information and, and as prepared as we were within two weeks. Because they would have to take the drawings that they were provided that were actually inaccurate in two of the sites and then figure out what was inaccurate, then send it out to their departments or their, their subs or within their own company. And it just it, they would never get a drawing back in what we put together in our proposals in two weeks because they haven't adopted this process or this technology. I was way ahead. Like, I, I only spent five minutes on site. They were there for an hour and a half. I spent five minutes walking around. Can you guys quantify? Like, I'm trying to figure out, can you guys, since you started implementing iGUIDE into, into your projects, can you quantify, you know that in construction we have this ratio. We figure out how many bids we submit, how many jobs we're going to get based on that, based on our numbers and all that other stuff. But um, is it fair to say that with the iGUIDE and all the information, you've got a better package being presented? Mm-hmm. You're getting more work? 100%. There's no question. What do you think is jumped regarding? I, I always thought it was like a one to three ratio. Like you, for every three that you were bidding, you were getting that one job, right? Is it getting much better than that? 
I I would think that uh, if I had to guess that once we get somebody into the process and they adopt the process and pay to get into our process because we don't do anything until somebody pays something. Yeah. Uh, we, we did, that's just our process, um, and part of that initial site visit payment is an eye guide. That's part of that deal. Um, our closing ratio is 90 to hundred percent. Like it might be a hundred percent. I believe it. Once they're in the, because those, uh, first of all, uh, you, you, uh, for lack of better words, weed out tire kickers because they have to pay to get into the process. So if somebody is doing a project for 500, a million, million five, uh, anything in that range, if they won't pay 500 or a thousand dollars to get into a process, then they're just, they're, they're not serious about the project. No. So we don't take any of those. So our closing ratio, once we're in our process and what we can provide, I would, I, I don't want to, I mean, knock on wood, but I think it's a hundred percent. Like we don't, we just, once they're in the process, they get excited, all that. We just don't, cause then we can adjust based on budgets and adjust uh, with different materials and different uh, items and construction and what we do and what we don't do off this platform and, and this baseline to suit their budget. Like we, we don't, you know, like people that have, you know, ideas of doing things, they, they get put back into reality about what things cost and how, because we're working the process. You're together. giving them answers. That's right. You're communicating and, and they have literally all, giving them answers to everything. And they have all the information. Yeah. Like they have this information. It's not like we're working off some, I just walked through your house and, or your commercial project. And I said, yeah, we can build an office there and put some glass walls and yeah, you want a couple offices over there. And we're all working off the same information. Yeah. And most people I find is they think their houses or their spaces are smaller than they are. They're like, ah, no big deal. We'll just build a, you know, a, a, a movie theater over there and a, and a workout room over here. And we're like, that's 1200 square foot movie theater. And that's it. And they're like, what? Yeah. Because now we have the, ba- you know, yeah. or they're building a cabana, pool cabana. We, we had one of those and we're like, do you know how big that is? Like, do you know how big this cabana is? Let's, you can let's give them do- real perspective. Yeah. So then they understand why they can't build a, a, a million dollar project for $500,000 budget. Right. We're all on the same page. So it goes without saying that the I guy is basically time saving. A hundred percent, right? 100%. And I, and I know that you were showing something just before we, we took a little break there about the layering i want you to rob explain the layering of the stitching and how any gc and i'm sure you guys have gone through this right mm-hmm. probably you and not I'm, I'm yeah maybe. Not any stitching yeah. making yeah. holes later on to discover things or to fix things or to move things that could disappear with eye guide yeah we originally we originally talked about pre midway and post yes. right and, and those words are interchangeable and uh, across a bunch of different industries but when you get your pre, so Carl's using pre to go and win business, right? Here's the space. I need a document and I needed drawings. So we do an initial scan then. Then we do a scan again when all the drywall's down. So we scan on the drywall's down. I'm showing a picture on the screen and we can show it. And, you know, you can pan around. Yeah, so you've got framing stage. But you basically are at the framing stage, you know, whether it's new build or during a renovation, you're at the framing stage. And you're essentially documenting everything that's going around. People are doing this today, how? Getting out their phone, picture. taking a picture. Yeah. And if they're doing five, 10 properties at a time, it's a lot of pictures a lot. and a lot to manage. We're, we're managing in this in one spot. So this is where the tags come in. That tagging word comes yeah. in again, where I can tag assets behind the walls. So I can tag where a joint is, where a wide joint is, where, an in, where water in, water out, gas in, gas out comes into play so that when I go into the next phase of layering, I just have to look over Patrick's, Patrick's shoulder, and I can go in here. So now here's finished. So now we're in finished, and we've scanned again, and now you n- can go between those layers of during midway construction and, and, and finished and go, oh, well, we now need to go and put in an extra lo- electrical socket. We need to f- fix a plumbing joint. And rather than punching holes in the walls to see where things are at, whoever is owning the digi- this digital copy can go into the previous layer, previous layer of construction and go, oh, I know exactly where the joint is. I know exactly where to drill my hole. Yeah, you're literally, and also you're literally discovering how that trade ran wire, ran pipe, ran duct, ran everything. Yep. 
what from the top from the bottom from the top to bottom and then you've you've got a client because this never happens in construction who wants to add something at this stage like they can do that when you show the layer and you're showing both images right. and both scans yeah. and then you can go well you know what here's the cost yeah yeah if you Carl if you, if you, you go done. back to the previous photo and look at the light fixture right there. in the hallway see how the wires run underneath to the yeah. left like on the uh, underneath the stairwell there up up higher rob no, over in the oh. corner. Right there. See how the, you can see the wire run from that junction box. Yeah. So if you wanted to hang a chandelier or a different thing, or whatever, you you could literally pull this up and go, okay, the wire's hung that way. Don't put any screws there. Let's go this way with screws. I mean, it's as simple as that. Like, that's a simple explanation of how this can be beneficial. But it... it but it's applicable to any kind of project. A anything. It's At applicable any to hanging TVs. It's applicable to, to anything you want to do in the future you ha have all this information and it does save a lot of time and effort and, and planning when you're trying to make adjustments in the future. So you could, if you wanted to, you have, you have everything in house. So you have your team, right? Yeah. But you could get every trade tagging their trade, mm -hmm. their work and their trade. Yes. You, you could. And, and have it all logged on one property. Yes. So that, and those tags, I don't, I don't have them visible on this property, but those tags can appear on this side so i can actually visually see oh i know what's behind the wall there's a tag there there's a junction box there a modem whatever it is and actually be able to interact with it even though i'm on this side of the wall wow. so an interesting you know kind of derivative of, of this as we're looking at the post property here is imagine how this gets more complicated as the property gets larger as we go into light commercial and, and medium-sized commercial when we're getting into 15, 20,000 square foot light commercial properties, just being able to document what's behind the walls, tag what's behind the walls and use it, then we put the drywall up. So then there may be a pause in the project. How much paint am I gonna need? How much paint or how much drywall am I gonna need for the next job? The eye guide will tell you wall area calculations per room, per property, all of that. When you scan it, or like, so once you've scanned it, you can't do it with just studs. Yeah. But once you've got completed walls like this, <clears throat> we will go through and do complete wall area calculations. Surface area calculations. Surface area calculations. So floor, wall, ceilings. Yeah. So for you to get an accurate, what, what do I need for my flooring? Oh, okay. What do I need for my paint? What do I need for my jib rock? And just be able to accurate, accurately estimate, right? So you won't have a stack of extra material on site or a shortage of material on site no. to deal with the problem no. or solution so or whatever you know, We've sold these to large painting contractors that will say, hey, we, we, we are only in that medium-sized commercial space. And a lot of times if we guess wrong, okay, we have inventory. If, if we guess right one way, we'll have excess material. We'll just use it on the next job. But if we guess wrong and we're short, now we're late. Now you're talking about labor, time, yeah. waste of time. And scheduling. you get all of that, again, within about, because we're not redrafting the property, about 10 hours later. So you scan it, boom. Have you done linear, linear takeoffs with it? Like once you got into the state? Yeah, yeah. So really? I'll provide that with the, our uh, construction manager. I'll, he'll ask me at any given stage, like, can you get me the linear feed of baseboard or something for a particular, and I don't, I've never even jumped on the job at all, but I can jump. Never jumped that on the job with a measuring go in and just get it them, on the yeah, eye guide. And I can through, through eye From guide. the eye guide. Yeah. Yeah. Holy cow. These are all our <laughs> secrets, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Not anymore. Um, Rob, I want you to show, so I want to get the joints. It, it, it's also good with, with subs. We, we don't have subs now because we got them in house, but when we had subs, we can calculate how much pipes used, how much, so we can hold people accountable because they can say whatever they want. Because what was but, it like up until then? It was well, a, you, a sheet and invoice. That's right. And, and they go, we so need, many pieces. Uh, uh, yeah, and I go, well, we did it at one point and we said, wait a second, I can measure exactly how much copper pipe was used there. And they were off by a lot. And I'm not saying that, that they're doing it on purpose. I'm not saying that it's, but that's what they quoted. I accepted the quote. Yeah, we, we always did. It, but... At the end of the day, I can go, like if, if, if we spent more time, I could tell them how much material they're going to use. Now I, I'm only dealing with labor. Now, the <clears throat> surface takeoff, okay, the wall behind me, mm -hmm. would you be able to calculate how much wood is in that wall? 
No, only the area. Just the area. Yeah. So you, it, it hasn't gone to the point where you can eliminate the gaps. dead, the gaps. No. Okay. Just, just uh, surface area. However, where it changes, imagine there's a door and three windows on that wall. Mm -hmm. Now I'm giving you accurate, a accurate, accurate area surface, surface area gap yes. with, with the subtractions. And there is software that we have that we import this file into that will give you the studs, 16 on center, whatever, whatever you decide, it will give you that with this baseline information. It's just... I think you're asking to like I guide doesn't that's not what their their model isn't doing takeoffs no but their information and what we take it turn it into and put it into you're a, using it we we can use it we need this to get to using the other software that spits out all those things to us I can tell you exactly how many studs go into a build like I don't need to buy extra I don't need to buy like, I can tell you exactly from this baseline to what Patrick and the design team does to a software that you tells exactly. me exactly. So I think you're, uh, uh, you know, I, I know where you're at, yeah. but I think you're asking iGuide and their technology if they, do, they don't do that, but without this, we can't do that. If that yeah, makes that's sense. Ex no, that's exactly what yeah. it is. So you're using their tool to streamline your finishing process. Yes, correct. It's already getting you to, what did you say? It was uh, taking you down the runway? 70%. 70%. 70% down the runway. Yeah. Right, that's basically what it's doing, which is like that's a huge amount of yeah. work that's already offloaded on yep. your schedule, right? Yep. And where this, where this kind of, we're saying seventy percent now. Our goal is to get to eighty-five, and then eight the next level after eighty-five percent is multi-floor properties. So we're we've just talked today about scanning this little room or yeah. scanning this this midway on this one property, and we've looked at a foyer. But as you get into multi-floor properties, whether they be residential or commercial, now you've got to have, con and this has been a change of our company, now you've got to, how do you align the floor? How do you do it floor to floor? How do you do your floor to floor alignments? Which is a whole new venture for us. We're releasing a new product in November that will handle all this because you, Mr. Architect, you, Mrs. Architect, you all have different methods of how you like to align your floor to floors. So we're now we're providing options to say, I want to buy load bearing walls. I want to buy exteriors. I want to buy stairwells. I want to buy this. And we can provide all that to you. We will provide that to you the same price we're doing today as a standard product. Hmm. So when you bring that into other software packages for doing other things, you're 85 percent Was that another right? secret? Yeah, this guy, I, 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 I'm going to be out of a job soon. Thanks, Rob. But I, I will touch on that just very quickly. They do do multi-floor, just so everybody yeah. knows. Yes. It, it, that's just a whole new level. But if you have a three-story building or it, we've done them, like it does do multi-floor. So I just yeah. don't want people to think that you it's not it capable hasn't done of that. We, no. we, we it, do multi-floor today. We're just improving how yeah. we do the options for alignments on floor-to-floor. Yes, but I'm just, yeah. you do it. Oh, for it sure. It sounded like you didn't do it. No, no, we're working do on it. But you can do a, a, a six story building right now. You just take eye guides at certain points at the bottom of the stairs, top of the stairs, and it stitches you can it tag together. Everything. You get so structural. You could tag engineering points. You could tag anything. You, you can tag anything. And on that tag, you can be as simple as text. Yes. You can be as simple as a picture, but you can also put a URL of where to go buy what you need Specs. to buy or link. put a, or put a link to an installation manual. Right of here's how to install it or a link to where to go buy it. You can do any any of that in terms of a, it being a dynamic tag. The other co really cool thing that we've been able to do from ground one uh, or day one, but it's just getting some traction now is to put an IoT tag, which is an Internet of Things tag on it. Meaning if I have a temperature device, a humidity device, a glass breaking audio device, I can put that on the tag. When that sends an alert, you get a text on your phone and it jumps you right into the room where the alert went off. Can we put a tag that every contractor <laughs> without a design engineering firm goes right to CCS? <laughs> so I think it's, it's just geolocating this information within a building and making it available. Did they say yes? So if a temperature <laughs> goes off, if a humidity thing goes off, you're able to send that to the technician and go, here's where the sensor went on. And here's why. And here's why. Yeah. And here's the information around it. And so when you go into that room, you're going to need, you, you know what you're going to need prior to even getting out of bed. Okay. We got to get into the drawing stage now. I want yes. I want you to take us through from the actual scan. You've got some projects, right? Yep. Uh, from the scan to taking us to the next stage, right? So people can understand that bridge, right? To that 70% point. Right? Yeah, to the 70% point. To the 70%. Sure. We, we don't ever say you rely on your 
your value add to do it on the drawing because there's so many different requirements, so many different aspects, you still have your piece to add. Yeah. We're just giving you a starting framework and we say around 70% down the runway. Um, the, the technology doesn't change. You scan your facility, you get the 3D tours that we've talked about today, allowing you to digitize. None of that changes. You, we've shown you how in the bottom left corner of the screen, you've got that navigation map where you yep. can go from foyer to room to whatever, floor to floor, or pre, whatever. The, the, one of the outputs is, is a drawing. So a, a scaled AIA layer drawing for you to give to your BCIN, which Patrick happens to be. <laughs> he takes that drawing and then can do his 30% to, to get his value add done. It. So all of that is delivered to your inbox in about 24 hours. So you scan the property, you get the 70% down the runway in about 24 hours. That is done a little bit by AI, but always QA'd by a human being because it has to go through the AIA standards. We deliver it to your inbox in 24 hours. Our, our feedback in the industry tells us that's on average two weeks, right? For people to go measure a property, go draft it up manually, go get it certified by a BCIN or an architect, a third party yep. from that to come back to me is about two weeks. We're doing that in 24 hours. Oh, anyway. it'd be longer than two weeks. Right. It, it, I was being kind. Yeah, but, yeah. No, but, that's long. Yeah. But the reality is. Yeah, but that, at 24 that, hours, that's insane, right? Right. So again, where you said five minutes ago, what we're really selling is time. Yeah. Right. We're giving you time to do more things, time to do better planning, time to do better value added design, time for better alignment with your customer. It's time that a lot of GCs don't have because they're scrambling to do that, to go to the next job, to bid well, on the next job. You're confidently submitting your bid, which makes you shine a lot brighter than your competition. And then that means you're getting awarded the, the project at that point, and now you get to do the job, and then you move on to the next one. And then you move on to the next one. And the example I said in the break was this this company in Iowa was, they've got, you're not in the U.S., so no, I can talk about not that. Yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> not is, yet. Is, yeah. is punching about uh, their weight. down and, Iowa, you know, Patrick. Yeah. And I, I think that's really important for every GC that's a business owner. They go, how do we take on more without taking on five more bodies or, or taking on more without five other subs? And this, how can I take on more? So by selling time, right, by better communicating, winning more at pre-construction and all that stuff, you're able to take on two or three more projects a year without having to staff up to do it, which is just more profit in your pocket. And you're scaling your business without scaling your bottom line, right? Have you grown, Carl? So, personnel wise so we we've grown in our office i'll talk on the design and the and the engineering side of it we've grown uh to uh one two three four five five uh personnel in office uh is where we stopped hiring and we stop and we just flipped the switch so we had five in house and we flipped the switch to utilizing the technology and we're doing four times the work with the same people, yeah. maybe three, three to four times the work. So when we had, so you didn't grow the workforce. We you, didn't, you grew we, the we, process. We grew technology and process in order to help with the, I, I told them we're not hiring more people because that's not the answer. The answer isn't to have 42 people in an office sitting there on computers. We're going to grow through technology and adapting technology. And in the short time that we've used iGuide, we used to have five, seven projects on our project board when we in the office, maybe uh, roughly. Yep. We we now have what fifteen to twenty five projects on the project board in the design engineered yep. side. Yep. And, and to that, be fair, that's that's a, a massive growth for a general construction company. Yeah. Right? Well, that's just that portion, and and this single handedly help us get to be able to take on more. Now the remainder. You know the remaining part of our process will will get more efficient with, and that's going to help us. But with the same group of people, I hope to be able to t take on you know 35, 40, 50 projects at one time, revolving on our board, with the same amount of people utilizing technology. It's already done it in six months. We we already have more. because you're adopting them to do that, right? Well, you're, we're you're understanding utilizing yeah. Rob and his team and I guide and utilizing. So this person other... has these tasks, and you're just adding to those tasks, but it's already in their grocery list of right. things to do. Yeah, so they can achieve that on a daily basis. You got yeah. it. 
Like if, if if Patrick had to drive out to every right. job well, site time. we had, it's we would never it. see Patrick again. Yeah, yeah. lasagna. Yeah, yeah. 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 that's right. Get it right. So yeah, we'd be he, he would have fun, but it, we would never see him again. We go out to a job site, or I I did some eye guides when I was out of town, uh, and we had five. I think I did in one day five projects into the scope, into the process, into design within two days. Whereas before, Five projects. yeah, that was one day I did. I went out out of town, did scans, brought it back to my team. I guy helped out and did their thing, sent the file back, and all of a sudden those projects are into design. If we were to do that a year ago, it would have been a me, week. Yeah, it would have been a week to get the five totally, measurements of the totally five projects. Yeah, and, and then, then you have to do the work. Go back and and Patrick and his team to put that together. Chicken scratch. Uh, yeah, they, they, they would, I don't even. I can't even explain. We would be yeah. submitting three pieces months of two by before fours. we would yeah. have those five projects into our into your designers' hands with data that they could work with to start the process. Accuracy. Oh, it's way out of line. It's not accurate at all. <laughs> 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 it's out by three feet. Here it's no, with, I'm just it's kidding. within what you were saying that there was that one project. A quarter of an inch. A quarter of an inch over what was it? The, the scale of the uh, thirty feet. Quarter of an inch, yeah. which is I, it's, yeah. Yeah. six I, mil, insane. six yeah. mil yeah. over 130 feet. The end of a tape measure is a quarter of an inch. Yeah, that I little know. that little metal piece, I right? Know. So, I mean, it's the accuracy. We haven't had one issue, like nothing, like not one issue. It is very accurate for what we've and, had. And, and that was important when we were transitioning. I think we we're off camera when we are off mic when we were saying it was you know, in the real estate world, it doesn't matter yeah. that that room is an inch off. It's it's a kid's bedroom as long as it's labeled properly. Nobody cares, and they can visual Timmy playing in that room. But when you're going to be giving that as a drawing to for estimates, it has to be accurate. It doesn't need to be accurate to a millimeter, but it needs to be accuracy to the point where the contractor trusts it, doesn't need to get out his measuring tape, mm -hmm. and can start doing his design. Well, I can... I can tell you where it needs to be accurate is where Patrick yeah. starts permit set drawings, where point loads are, where uh, that's that's where the accuracy comes in. You could we could get away with doing a renovation or you know something that maybe you don't have permit set drawings or you're not building anything structural or anything you know it, it, mechanical. The diffuser can be off by a couple inches, but when you get into structural drawings, which is what Patrick takes care of, the full permit set. If you're off by three inches, four inches, they, there's a problem. Can you, uh, Rob, show that one building? Are you allowed to show that one building? <coughs> the, the 130. The, sure. Yeah, I just want to. Like I, the foyer, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah that yeah. area there. Yeah. Well, no, the actual floor plans. Oh, sure. Yeah, because I want people to understand that um, it's potentially off by a quarter inch over 130 feet, but that doesn't mean that that first room is off by a quarter inch. No. No, no right? So I want them to understand that, that like, that's the, the variable over that scope of that length, right? Right. So, you know, this is just in a PDF format, yeah. right? So that's just, 130 feet. That, yeah, the, it's a condo foyer, right? It's a condo foyer. Yeah, condo, so, con main floor of a condo. But look at that. But your your accuracy for every single room, yeah, it's, it's well under that, right? Well that, under that. It's nothing. So it was really interesting. We did a property last week in uh, northern Ontario where we started outside the building. We went all the way around, and then we went inside and then started do, doing the inside. And when we got to the last place, the door jams lined, lined up and they'd never seen each other, right? The door jam lined up to about a quarter of an inch over a property that was probably about 250 feet long. Like it was, it was a really neat experience wow. to see that data had never been near each other, but when outside and inside came together, it was, the door jams lined up perfectly. All right, so what's negative? <laughs> adoption you got just adoption it right you, you know the, the, com the comfort zone and the and the, you have to finance it through the way Carl. people do it today <laughs> is getting out their tape measure and, and a, a sketch pad letting go of that letting way. go of that and trusting a new product that can get you five five more projects a year 10 times pro you know 10 more projects a year letting go of the time of i'll just go in my truck get out my tape measure check it again and again you're limiting your scalability of your business every time you do that Right, so it's adoption. It's not anything on the tech side. I, I think, uh, it, and you nailed it earlier. Is it, it's a tool that should be in your trailer or in your yep. construction company's repertoire. Like we just went out and bought 
more tools for our plumbers, like, you know, the crimping tools that were $8,000. Like, you just buy more technology in order to, to, but they don't look at it as a tool and they're already getting it done traditionally the way it was and their cousin does the drawings and they're, you know, like the typical, but if they looked at it as like a tool like we do, like we don't start a project without this item, they would... Like it, it just, it just makes sense, but they don't look at it that way. And think of that as a tool where once you've skinned that property, once you have a digital copy and you've only done their main floor, a renovation on their main floor, but you scan the whole property to begin with when that customer and then wants their basement done, who are they going to go to? When we've already had it, you already have the homework. We already had it happen. Yeah. And somebody's like, let's do this now. And we're like, yep, pull up the same drawing. Okay, let's go. And you're already in the basement scanning it and you're already seeing all mechanicals that are coming down from the upper floor. Yeah. You already know where everything is at. Like, yeah. is that? Like it's... So, and so for the time, because you've already done that up front, a little bit of work, like we're talking maybe 20, 30 minutes it's of minutes. upfront work. It's minutes, minutes that for Patrick to turn around and say, hey, let's just go to, let's create a drawings package to get the basement done. Yeah. yeah. It's, you're not going back in your truck. You're not getting your tape measure out. You may have a virtual meeting with a customer going, what are your ideas? What do you want to do? You're not, you're never going to replace that. But the whole timeline of, of that next pro project number two or project number three is eliminated. Are you guys seeing more old school or young school embracing this? Both. I, I wish, both. I wish I could pick one, but it's really both, both seeing the value. We're both seeing the value okay. because the, the younger uh, GCs are, are saying, hey, I want tech. I want to be efficient. I want to scale my business. And, and they see it right away. Whereas the old school guys, they're tired of being on their knees measuring, right? And they, they say, hey, if I want to be competitive, um, this is what I got to, got to adopt. You guys throw it into your marketing? Well, your pitch? we're working on that. <laughs> <laughs> You're collaborating with we, your marketing? We, we don't. We it do. is a, a sales component, right? Yeah, we... we we put it into our package. We don't necessarily say I guide at this point. Yeah. Um, it is part of our initial site visit. We sell the experience in the site visit and the 3D. To, we don't give them who we use and, and, and why, you know, we're using that company, which hopefully with Rob and his team will get there at some point to be able to say those things. But um, it's definitely talked about. It's just maybe not. I guide, I don't tell them specifically we're doing an I guide of your house. Um, Cause that is kind of our, you know, our whole process and our initial site visit, we sell it as a package with CCS and what we provide. And that's one of the tools we use. I don't, you know, say our plumber uses Milwaukee, uh, you know, automatic crimping tool. Yeah. You know, I say, hey, our plumber's the best and they got to, they, they, we want them to, buy into the culture, buy into the experience and buy into the fact that we are doing things more efficient and more accurate and so on. So we sell that as a package as a whole. But having said that, if I guide wanted to put their name all over our trucks and trailers and hats and shirts, then uh, we'd but be yeah, more yeah, than it, happy it, to do that. If you sold it beforehand, <laughs> then you wouldn't get that nice surprise look on the potential client that's going to be working with hiring. Well, you. We, we sell that we do a 3d tour. Okay. We just don't sell, you know, the, the actual brand is not anywhere on our documentation um, because we don't have authorization to do that, you know. Um, but I would. <laughs> if, if, they, if I guide wanted to put it all over, I'd be wearing an eye guide hat. I right totally now. forgot to even shout out to <laughs> you guys with your website and everything like that. But I mean, we'll put it in the show notes and everything. So it's CCS, right? ENG.com. Yes. That's what it is. And no, then, uh, CCS, ENG. So first three letters com, of engineering. Sorry, dot com. Con is no, no, con and, and then dot com. And then dot com. Right. Yeah. And then on Instagram, you guys are under the same name as well. Yeah. Which is you find them at CCS, E N G C O N. And then on Facebook, the same thing, right? Correct. And then iGuide's information. Go iGuide.com. And you'll find everything there. You'll find everything there. Okay. Backslash CCS. <laughs> 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 is it back or forward yeah, slash? Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know what one it is. What are the I slashes? Think, I think we covered everything, no, Robert. We, did, we, did we miss anything? Do you want to share anything that's coming down the pipe? I, Not yet? I, I just want to share one last thing. I mean, they, they have a lot of things, uh, and I got, I'll let you say the last words, but um, there's a lot of information that's been talked about, and there's a lot of, you know, uh, process and, and things. You, but uh, everything aside, Everybody should just go buy one and start with the basics of it. And then what you do with it after 
is up to you and where you're taking, but every contractor should have one of these in my personal opinion. And it would help all the contractors work from the same playing field. So if we all had the same information, we were all quoting from the same things, it would keep everything in the whole industry uh, fair and, and, and exposed the way it should be. I agree with you. I just, I know that Rob, you brought up the insurance restoration, that whole, was there a disagreement or what have you, but we even like, we'll touch upon it just briefly now, just legal. Yeah. If clients say that you didn't do what you said you did, but it's actually, here's the scan. I did do what I needed to do. And this is what, how it was built. And, and here's the initial scan of the property before, before we even came in and started came in. and we did anything right. to it. And here's it here. Here it was at midway, you yes. know, at the agreed upon date or, you know, and being able to have that in your back pocket legally and then finish, Hey, we delivered what was agreed up to designed to yep. delivered on. Yep. There, it's legal documentation. I, I can speak from experience. We just had this in the last two weeks. We did a larger project, I don't know, three months ago, four months ago. And we had to go back to the pictures and the and the scans. And, and we submitted all that information because we were not the signing architect, uh, the, you know, the sign-off architect uh, on the project. It was a different firm. So before they sign off, they want to make, and we actually had to send these, like it, it literally, we literally just did that with this information. And we said, here's all your information. Here's what we did. Here's the, and, and you would have been panicking if it was an old school way. We, you didn't we probably have would have been ripping off drywall. Yeah. Right. Or, or find some your solution expense. or a lot of arguing on the phone Yeah, or, you know, or pleading or whatever you have to do. But uh, we didn't have to, we just said, here's the, here's the information. Here it is. Here's how it was. Here's how it is and sent it off and the next day we got our letter of conformance so and all done yeah. no and no stress and it was no much stress. less stress than the old school <laughs> arguing and yelling i mean i do have some stress <laughs> but, but uh but i agree with you totally like this is a tool that i think everybody that's in the construction industry it's small big doesn't matter yeah you should be considering it at least call you contact you yes and, and just get more information if you haven't gotten enough here as a, as a result. And there, there are some really good examples that we've talked about today on the website. So if you would like to see examples of the pre and, and midway construction stuff and just reach out to us to, to talk about the time, that's what we're selling. It's a great tool, but we're just giving you more time. Do you guys, would you guys do a demo? Sure. So if someone calls you up and go, show me. In, in the GTA, Southwest yeah, yeah. Ontario? Sure. Something like that, right? Yeah, so if absolutely. they reach out to you and I go, I'm curious about it. Because, I mean, you, Carl's made it sound very easy. I feel confident enough that I could probably, you guys give it to me and I'll throw the instructions away and I'll still do it and I'll be able to figure it out. But I, I feel confident that if there's some people out there that are like, I want to see a demo. I'm just curious about it. But And and as Canadians, that's what we always do is see it to believe it, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I want to, Then I, I'm sold. Then and I'm here sold. you go and I'll tell two friends and I'll tell two friends. Right. And, <laughs> and it goes from there, right? So. You know, and that's a whole other, whole, whole other dynamic here is you think about the number of BCN, private BCN architectural people that are yeah. out there that need drawings that are being contracted to go, hey, I need, I need drawings for this thing. I'll go get it in my car and measure it. Well, would you rather do it in 40 minutes or eight hours? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and there's a whole other aspect as a sidebar to the construction industry. You have some companies like CCS that do it full gamut start to finish. But when it's in individual pieces of this buddy does this for me and this does this for me and then I got to send it out, you can see how that whole time gets extended unnecessarily. So there's a lot of architects, BCN companies that have adopted it saying, I'm sick of just wasting my time what it really is that's mm -hmm. the truth i feel like getting rid of my 300 foot long tape measure yeah, yeah. you don't need it anymore right no it's yeah. an antique you keep it's that an, well, that's <laughs> nice yeah, yeah. frame it epoxy you, it. You, i'll epoxy it for you <laughs> <laughs> i think that's everything is that everything rob or that's is everything i think that's everything patrick you've been talking a lot on the show here i know i just keep my mouth shut <laughs> <laughs> uh that's it i think anything else you want to share carl no i Okay. I think we covered a lot. I, I definitely think we covered I, a lot I, of ground. I, you got to just check it out. Just go <laughs> online, like you said, honestly, and just check it out, and you'll get a sense of what this is all about. Yeah, I'd like to thank you, Manny. I think this is no, a great thanks, forum. Man. I think this is great. a great forum for I, I, for construction to be able to share their benefit, what they do to make their life easier. And this is a fantastic forum for Canadians and Americans listening to share share these ideas and get better at what nice. they do. And, I, uh, I wish TCL was around when I got started. Yeah. It would have helped me quite a bit. <laughs> and thanks to Carl. I mean, with no joke, we've only known each other for six months. And 
his energy in the company within his company, what he's doing in his business is very energetic. And uh, we love that. And we like to see he's adopted it right away and taking it, taking it to market right away. And it's something that we're just trying to get that message out with. Okay. And then also you guys are going to be at the building show. Both of us will be at the building both, show. Yeah, CCS yeah, both, yeah, CCS and you guys, yeah. Do you guys have your booth numbers? Or do you know offhand? 618, I think. We'll find out later yeah. on. We'll put it in the show notes. We'll have to put it in the show but notes. But anybody who's going to be attending the building show, they, you, you'll find both. Are you guys neighbor to neighbor or what? No. No. I, no, I, I, I think we got You tried, together. Carl? I tried. I tried. <laughs> got real, real close. Take the curtain down in between. I tried hard. Let's just make this partition. Yeah, yeah. You can put fence. your stuff at our booth. Let's just everybody have one booth. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, and it's kind of interesting when we go to shows, whether we're attending or exhibiting, because we have a, a really basic question that we go back to is, are you tired of being on your hands, measuring stuff and sketching it and then wasting time? And nobody says, oh, I love it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. And no. how about doc? And that's where I said, you know, digital property documentation. And, you know, after this time together, you start to realize it's just a fancy way of saying, I have a digital copy of my property and I don't have to go back and remeasure. Yeah. It's basically meta. Yeah. Right. Construction meta here. Well, for construction, but you guys are also doing other segments as well, too. Yeah. I love it. It's, I think it's great. Thanks we, so much for digitally scanning the studio. Yeah, I'll give you a copy of it. Oh, I'd love that copy of it. No, no, that was amazing. So I, I thank you guys again. I really appreciate oh, thank it. You. Thank you. And all the notes will be in there. And I think that there is a, a mention of like there'll be some sort of a uh, a discount or something like that through TCL podcast. That's correct. Yeah, that'll be in the show notes as well. So obviously, if you listen to the show here and then you guys reach out and we heard it on TCL, then they'll talk to you guys about a slight discount, right? So it won't be, I guess, as big as the CCS discount, but <laughs> <laughs> maybe it will. We'll, I don't we'll know. Give a discount on drawings. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's it. All right, all right. we're all done. Thank yeah, you, Patrick. Thank, thank, you. You, Carl. thank you, thank you, Rob. Thanks. Thank you, Manny. Appreciate it. Thank you, Carl. Yeah, thank all you. Right. We're out of here, Angelie.